With that said, we will just go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be doing a V ring. Uh, it's not going to be this exact one. I couldn't really find a ring that I'm going to be doing, but it'll essentially be this with the head right here kind of pulled closer right here. So they're pretty popular nowadays. I'm sure if you're a jeweler you or designer, you've, you've done one of these. So let's get started. All right. So with every ring, we need to start with a ring row, right? So I can select ring row up at the top under tools submenu and it will populate this. Now you can use the drop downs right here to select the finger size or you can use the scroll bars and sometimes it, depending on the command they have viewport handles that you can use preferably I use the viewport handles whenever I model so if you see me doing that just don't get freaked out so let's go to a finger size 7 and right click to accept there we go all right so next we need the outside shape so I pretty much anytime I have a ring use an outside ring row so select that command and this is what you get now like i said i can use the sliders right here or i can use the viewport handles which i tend to use more often than not so let's do a two by two by 2.5 if i right click i now have the through finger outline of my ring so next we need to get that that pear shape and create that V but we're going to use the stone to help us do that that way our model stays fully parametric right so let's run gem on ring rail and you can see it puts around gem now I can use this now you can see I need a pair and I accepted the command before I was ready right so I can actually come here and edit each command that way I can choose my pair I'm going to put a custom size of 11 by 7 by 68 and use the viewport handles to adjust the rest so I can right click and now I have my pair and the outline of my ring so like I said we're going to use the pair shape to help us create that kind of arc, right? So like I said, we'll use a curve. So gym offset curve, and you can see I have an outline right here. So let's pull it down to, to the top right here, and we'll offset it by like 1.5, maybe not that much, maybe one, and right click. So I'm going to need one here and then one for my bottom curve. So let's run that command one more time and right click. All right, so now we're going to blend these and these. So to do that, I'm going to do a curve from two view. So a curve from two view takes two planar curves so this one is planar against my construction plane and then if i go top view these are planar looking down right so planar just means they're flat on one plane so let's run that i'm sorry let me back up so auto hide down here is a powerful tool inside parametrics so the way parametrics work if you think of a tree they layer things on top of one another so it starts with the trunk goes to a branch goes to a smaller branch and then gets all the way down to a leaf right that'll be the the end so we have to in order to maintain parametrics keep that whole tree intact you, you have to keep everything inside the document so this auto hide is something we developed that will automatically hide geometry from you to maintain parametrics if i have it toggled on and i run you can see my ring rail now goes away now we develop it 
to where it hides it right here as well. And you can always come here and just show it, right? But if I have it off, I can run curve from two views and it will stay in the document. So let's go back, let's turn this on. Curve from two view, let's select the curve, GV hide, and we will bring back our outside curve. You can always use these to stay organized, right? So I could come down here and rename them, top V rail, and rename this one, say bottom V rail. Parametric design is so new to the industry that we're kind of all just figuring it out together, to be honest. But I would rather be with Jim Vision, who's leading the development on parametric design than further in the back, you know? Yeah, so now that we have two curves that are form fit to our ring rail, we need to blend them together, right? So I can select blend curve, select this rail, and then my rail up here. And if I pull this, you can see I'm starting to get that V look, right? I need to do a few more edits. So let's do that right now. I'm going to increase the blend amount so it contours better. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to toggle the join curve. And what that's going to do is going to join all the curves that the blend is using. So yeah, I just want to get that right. And this one looks good. So I can right click to accept. And now I have my top. So let's do the same, but we're going to do it for the inside rail. So blend curve, ring rail, then my curve from two view rail. Let's pull this to location. Try and match this as close as possible. Then we need to increase the blend amount. There we go. And to do the same as the previous, I'm going to join curve. Maybe not go down quite so far. There we go. And I can right click. So now I have these curves. So now we just need to essentially profile place. So under tools, select profile place. I will select my inside curve. Let's bring this down about to the uh, four, four, well, five and seven locations. It'll make sense um, when we get further down. So I'm going to change the profile shape to a more square look. Let's go to a three millimeter. Let's add one about here. Let's use the gumball to adjust. And then we need to relate these. So just for reference. So right now this profile is not related to that outside curve. So now when I move it, it can get taller than that outside curve. So I want to relate all of my profiles to it. So up at the top, there's an outside curve box. If I click that and click the outside curve, now, no matter where I pull it, it'll stay relative to that location. Got it? So let's pull it about there. Like I said, let's add one here. Use the gumball a bit to reduce the width for a nice taper. And then let's add at the top. We're not going to go all the way like you would think. You don't want to go past halfway point. So if you can think from a top view, uh, this would be the center point. You want to go past that because you're going to get surface flipping on each other. So you want to go as close as possible, but not cross it. So that's good right there. And what we can do is taper this one. So now I can toggle under dynamic commands, activate auto sweep to see exactly what we are looking at. Let's pull it a bit more. 
And then I can use the gumball in the viewport handles to adjust a bit. Let's take this one and we will pull this one out. Go back to this one because I'm a perfectionist. And there we go. So I will right click to accept that. So now I essentially have one side, right? So I can take this side along with this top profile and I'm going to mirror to the other side. So select mirror. You can see I have that. Now, one thing I see, I have a little bump right here and that is due to the blend curve. So let's edit that just to show you guys. It's because it's following that top offset curve. So the closer I get to the end, the more relaxed it will get. Okay, so let's do the bottom. One more thing. There we go. All right, so now we just need to take these two and blend them together. So under surface, we have what's called a profile sweep. If I select that, I can select both my profiles, but I get some geometry like this. So I can pull these uh, viewport handles to try and make something, but I'm also going to toggle automatic seam off. So the program tries to align the seams down here, which, so we need to come up top and let's extend these to about two, right click, and that's pretty good. So now just mirror this profile at the bottom. And now we can two rail sweep these. Under surface, I'll do a sweep two. Select my two rails, and there we go. So next, we need our head. So I can select settings, run head builder, and I can use the viewport handles to adjust. So if I scroll up, you can see I have different levels on my head builder. So as I cycle through them, you can see I get more, more options. So let's do this. Let's bring the offset in a bit and increase the thickness. Let's pull the base in, and then I'm going to increase the thickness right here. So now we can hop over to level three. So level three will allow me to select individual prongs. So I wanna select that V prong because it is extremely wide. Let's use these angles to reduce. Fill in that gap and reduce this one a bit. All right, well, there is the base of my ring. I wanna put some more prongs on there just cause I don't like just two prongs, so I'm going to go to level one, and you can see right here, if I click that one, it'll give me two extra prongs, right? Pick them up just a tad, and I can right click. Actually, I wanna make these prongs meet the shape. So let's edit one more time. So I can select this prong, and I can move the location of it. So let's go to 15. Can you still size the ring rail at this point? I sure can. Let's do the same to this one and right click. So just to show you, I can always come here. Let's say they wanted a nine. Let's say they wanted a 12. Also, I want to bring this down just a tad. Maybe not that much. All right, so let's put some stones real quick. So I stop holding you guys hostage. So I can extract an ISO curve. All right, so I just extracted an ISO curve. I don't know why my computer didn't like me, but I'm going to go under gems and run gem on curve. I can select my target location. So the culets are now pointing at the origin, which is F4. 
but I want them to follow this surface. So I'm going to change them all to the surface. Let's pull this down. Let's adjust the size. And I'm going to well, I'm going to put a another one up here, but we will get there in a second. 1.5. There we go. So let's take these and we will go to transform and mirror to the other side. And now I'm going to run gem on curve, uh, gem on surface rather, which is this one. I will choose 0.5 and 0.5, which will give me the exact center. And let's taper it up a bit. And lastly, we can put prongs. That's the problem with using just the viewport handles because sometimes they get extremely close together. And I can right click. I'm going to select this prong and GB hide it just to get rid of it. And I will put a two prong head on it like this. I will remove the rails. Let's pick it up. Let's angle these. Let's select a different style then. Pick this down and move it all around. Right click. And GB hide. And we're done.